I welcome you again. This morning, I welcome you guys. Thank you for joining me on this program. And I believe God for you, for your life. You know, my friend called God one name today that I really love. She said, God is the God of the last hour.com. The year is running to an end, and maybe you still have unexpected, you know, expectations that are, that are not met yet. You see how prayers are not yet answered. But I want you to trust God. If he has not done it yet, doesn't mean he doesn't have the power to do it. He will do it. He's a great and mighty God. He has done it in my life. And I'm here to tell you today that God is the Almighty. He's a merciful Father. And he will come out strong for you in Jesus. Yes, I have a testimony, a great one. And uh, when I was passing through this turbulence, this, uh, this storm, I told God that if he would do it, I would declare him. His glory in the land of the living. I would tell the whole world. And when I was making that vow that day, it's like, really, you would tell the whole world? And I quickly told God, I said, God, if you give me the platform, I will do it. And I'm here today. It's, big, it's one of the reasons I started this show as well. This Let's Talk Marriage with Fuke. God is great. You know, sometimes in the year 2014, our, our eldest son just gained admission to the university then. And uh, when he was going to school, you know, there was a night his dad called him. They had like a man-to-man -man talk and they prayed together. I remember I also told him that you to pray, let God show you his plan for your life, his purpose for your life. 
And they prayed and our son went to sleep. Only for him to have a dream. And in the morning he came to tell us the dream. He said while he slept, somebody appeared to him in his dream. And told him that you, you are going to that university. That his enemy will not graduate from that university. That his enemy will die while in school. And that the parents of the enemy, because he's not my son. That's not the promise of God for my life. That the parents of his enemy will weep over their own son. So when he told us this the morning, we just, we prayed together, we cancelled it. And we believe it's done. So he went to school and we forgot about the dream. Then on another occasion, he had another strange, and this time I won't call it a dream. It was like a trance because according to him, he was not really sleeping. He's like he was half awake. And the man walked to him, walked into the room. He said the man, you know, the body of a man, but that the head was a vulture, the head of a vulture. And where he was seated, he was rooted there. He couldn't move, and the man was walking towards him. And when the man got to him, the vulture started pecking on his head, started pecking on his brain. When he told us, you know vultures feed on dead animals. So when he told us this dream, we were like, what is really going on? And we really dedicated our time. We prayed, we canceled it, and we committed him to God. Because his name is, our son's name is Emmanuel. And we told him, God is with you. No harm will come unto you. And he went to school. He went back to school. You know, he stays in the hostel. He was staying in the hostel then. So this sickness just started. We thought it was over. And the irony of the sickness started. We didn't even link it to the dreams he'd been having. We just forgot about the dream. We felt we prayed and that was it. We didn't even remember those dreams. And he kept on complaining. One complained to the other. He would come home. Uh, he couldn't eat, he was losing appetite, he was having fever, he would be shivering at night in class. <laughs> what, we started taking him to hospitals. And they conducted so many tests, they couldn't find what was wrong with Not even malaria parasites. Not even malaria parasites. And we were just going up and they would call us from the school, come and pick him up, he's in the clinic now. That is how we were running helter skelter, going from one hospital to the other. And it was in this situation one day, and not only that, all other things were affected in the family. Our finances was nothing to write home about. We, it was like we were at a dead end. So in the house one day, I was seated there, just thinking, Lord, what is going on? Have mercy upon my family. And a lady just walked in that day, a servant of the Most High God. I've only seen this lady like two times. She recently moved into the neighborhood, and I think I've visited her like on one location, maybe two. She knocked on my door and came in and said, Ma, I have a message for you. I looked at her because this is not somebody I've been talking with. But when she said message, I said, okay. She said, Ma, the Lord sent me to you and told me that your family is struggling. That is how she put it. That your family is struggling and you are going through a tough period. But that God said he wants to show you mercy. And as you are watching me today, I'm telling you, the Lord will show you mercy. Whatever situation you are going through, I mean, this was a period in our life that uh, the black shoe I was using as a member of the choir, you know, we would normally wear Amen. black shoes to minister. It got to a point that that shoe was giving me problems. I kept on amending it until I went to the Jamaica one day and Hausama, you know, uh, Malams don't reject their jobs. But this Hausama, I went to him that and he rejected my shoe. He said, Madam, there is nothing to amend again. This year. Me, I know feel so I'm again. <laughs> when he said that, I went back home, I bought glue, I glued my shoe, polished it, and still wore it to church, singing unto God. That was the situation we were then. Yes. Very hopeless. Are you in a hopeless situation today and you are watching me? I'm telling you of a miracle, miracle that happened not too long ago. God will do it again. The God that showed forth on our behalf, that sent helper to us in our home. I was seated in my home. I didn't go anywhere. God sent his own prophet to me. That same God will show forth in your life today. He will show forth in your situation and his name will be glorified. So as I was saying, she told me that we were going through struggles and she told me some other things to which I can't share on this program and I listened because what she was saying they were the truth they, it was the truth and there are things that we never discussed with anybody nobody knew what we were going on people saw us we smile we sing to God we pray we do our work we laugh 
you will see us and feel everything is okay. So for her to be telling me those secrets, I knew God was talking to her. And she said, God wants to show you mercy. She said, number one, you are in the wrong place. And God says he's taking you to America. I said, really? He said, yes. All of you in your family. At that time, my mom was staying with us. She said, the seven of you. That God said by August. She came to me in March. She said, God said by August, the seven of you will be giving you S visas and you are going to the US. I said, amen. This was the time that we had nothing in our accounts. And I told her, she said, God said he's going to supply all our needs. As at that time, our children's passport had expired. Nothing. And you know, from that day, God began to show forth. Then again, she told me, she said, are these all your children? I said, no, one is in the hostel on campus. He said that son is under witchcraft attack. That in fact, she was seeing a coffin as I then. That is like they've killed his enemy. But God said he will show my family mercy again. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we said, amen. And she said, you are going to pray that your family should be ready to pray. I said, what are we doing? I've been praying all my life. I'm ready to pray. And this was how we started, my friends. Please, as you are watching this broadcast, help me share it, please. Please, let me share. Let others see and see what God has done and what he will do in their lives again. So she told me that our son was under witchcraft attack, but God said he will show us mercy. In fact, she said, can we bring him back from, uh, from school? I said, I said, no, because he was planning for his exam there. He said, okay. She said, okay, we'll pray and God will take control. And that was how we started. As we were praying, it was as if the, program, the problem was getting harder. For three months, we were doing vigils. This lady will come, come and we, this was a young lady, not yet married, thanks to us. She will come knocking at her door, 12 midnight every day. For three months, we were praying. We cried upon God day and night, and God started showing forth. By August, as she had said, my family went to the embassy. As we were trying to gather documents, you know, the documents of our house, some other things, she said, look, you won't even need to open that file when you get to the embassy because God had already prepared the grant for you. That these are the two questions you'll be asked and your details will be given. And their viewers, that was how it happened. Very easily, very smoothly, the whole family, including my mother, seven of us were given the U.S. visa in August, according to the word of the Lord. So we waited. We were looking for money to buy tickets. You know, for seven people, we needed a lot of money. And there was nothing, nothing to our name as at the time I was talking about. But all of a sudden, God showed forth again. We even thought of selling our house, but we couldn't get buyers. You know, the situation in Nigeria, in the country. So somehow, there was a family property that had been put on sale for five years, for the past five years, no buyers. Suddenly, a buyer just showed forth, and that property was sold. And our own share, we used it to buy tickets. That was how God sorted out the ticket money. And then we bought it, the cheapest ticket that was to, you know, to materialize in March of 2016. That was last year. But as children, as, as all sickness got worse. By March, he left school completely. If, no, by December, he left school. Like drama playing in our eyes. Our son just left school like that. He couldn't cope anymore. They said we should take him home. And he stopped going to school. And we were praying. But we continued like that. By January, he stopped eating. He couldn't eat anymore. In fact, to drink water, we were only feeding him with custard. Maybe he would take like three spoons. To drink water, he got to a stage by March when he was admitted. He couldn't even drink water. He was lean. You could count all his bones. And we were just helpless like that, just praying, God, show us mercy. God, show us your mercy. And he showed us mercy. Then, one day in March, we thought it was getting better. All of a sudden, it started bleeding. Viewers, please, as you are watching this broadcast today, let me share it. I want to tell the world what God has done for me. One day in March, it started bleeding. And this kind of bleeding is not an ordinary one. Remember, we've gone to all the hospitals, we've gone to federal research, we've gone to Mikyo, if you are you know, familiar with Nigeria, we've gone to various specialists in it. They couldn't find what was wrong with him. No, no jam, no bacteria, nothing. And so we continued. He was lean, his bones were showing. Later in the, the program, I'll show you some of the pictures to see what God has done for us. So in this condition, one day again, he started bleeding. And this kind of bleeding, it was like when you open a tap, I mean with, you know this washing machine if you are in Nigeria, the hose, 
the pressure with which water gushes out of the hose. That was how blood was gushing out of our son's anus. And when this thing started, as at that time he was already in that pass, he was wearing that pass, the thing will flow into the that pass, gushing out with big clots. I've never seen it in my life, and I will never see it again. My eyes will not see corruption again. Because God told me that he has taken that cup of trembling from my hands. I will no longer drink from it. He has given it onto the, onto the, he has put it in the hands of those that have fitted me. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. So this blood started on that fateful day. And we rushed into the hospital again. When they got the doctor said, what is this? They tried to stop the blood, nobody could stop it. When it's on the bed and the blood comes like that, it will gush out, fill the whole purpose, fill the whole bed sheet and start flowing onto the floor. We were packing blood from the floor. The nurses would give us both. We were literally packing the, in my son's blood from the, from the floor. And it was in this condition for two days. We were helpless but just calling on God. We never, my husband never left the, the bedside. Sometimes, you know, as a mother, I'll be so afraid after packing the blood that will run outside, start crying to God. God, have mercy. Show us your mercy. Heal my son again. Nobody could, their doctors could not, they were perplexed. <laughs> and uh, I remember one of the days my dad called me, that day was living. My father loved me so much. He said, Funke, Talo, Shem. Meaning, Funke, whom did you offend? Did you quarrel with anyone? I said, Dad, I didn't offend anybody. I didn't fight with anyone. He said, because me or Robi say, Yo, what is happening? Everybody was helpless, but God was in heaven watching. And in the midnight that day, he bled like that for two days. After the first day, at midnight, I went outside. I looked up to heaven and I said, God, if this boy survived this, I know it is you. And I would tell the whole world what you have done. If my son lives again, if you could stop this blood and heal my son, I would tell the world what you have done for me. And he's like, really? You would tell the whole world? And I said, yes, if you give me the flat part from God, I would do it, just heal my son. And you know, brethren, even after those two days, our son still didn't die. He still lived. And we were like that. And until one day, the doctor said that was it. They couldn't do any other thing again. In fact, to be candid, my faith failed me that day. And I went to the side of my son. I felt, well, if he was going, let me have a good memory. I went to him. I told him to forgive everybody because he, knew to, he also knew it was an attack. I said, forgive everybody, Manu. And I was kissing him telling him how much we loved him. We are so proud of you. The little time, the short time you stayed with us, we are proud of you. I was saying a farewell speech to my son to show you how helpless the situation was. But the power of God came. I didn't know where my son got that strength. He held on to me, said, Mommy, stop it. I'm going nowhere. I'm staying right here with you. And I started saying, Amen. In manner you will not die. In manner you will live. And the mighty God had me that day. He had our prayers. You know, after bleeding like that, sometimes I'll go out to come in again. I'll be so afraid. I'll call my husband on the phone. Is he still there? You know, meaning, was he still breathing? My husband would tell me, come here. No, Emmanuel is going nowhere. Emmanuel will not die. And I thank God our son did not die. We were waiting for the day to travel. To travel, he was still in the hospital. Doctor said, no, this boy cannot make the trip. As at this time, Emmanuel, please come and show pictures. As at this time, he was almost lifeless on the bed. Not eating tea. And... There was a day the doctor said, look, we can't allow you travel with this kind of situation. And they said, uh, but our son told us, we even planned of changing the dates. But he looked in our eyes, he said, mommy, promise me you won't change that date. I'm going to America with you. We said, amen. And brethren, to the glory of God, he made the trip. The day we got to America, that same day, we called 911 and he was taken to the hospital. I did did you see him? We took him to the hospital, and when we got there with all the medical reports from Nigeria, we showed them they started running help that scatter, running tests on him. God is mighty. I thank God for showing forth on our behalf. They ran tests and they too couldn't see anything. Have you shown them the pictures? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. You wanna yeah. Okay. Then we'll show them the rest of it, okay? Thank you. So they started running health and scatter. They too didn't find anything. They queried because in Nigeria they called it lymphoma, they called it uh, lung cancer, they called it, it did colonoscopy, it did uh, and, name it. Test. So the doctor started working, running health and scatter. I thank God. God bless America. You know, 
when we say God bless America in our home, we mean it from the depth of our hearts. God bless them. And God also bless all the nurses and doctors that worked on my son in Nigeria. I thank you all. God bless you. So we were there and they started running and nothing. They said they didn't know what was wrong. At that, at that point, you know, we, we felt that when we get to America, everything would be okay, they would detect it. When the doctors told us that nothing, they couldn't see anything, they didn't know what was wrong, but they could see that it was. And in fact, they told us that if we had stayed one more day, they'd have lost his enemy. So I started crying. I went somewhere. In fact, they couldn't console me. They just gave me a box of tissues to start wiping my tears. I went somewhere and I started crying out to God. God show me, you will show forth your mercy. You say you will show me your mercy. I asked, we saw my son that, and my husband and the pastor were there somewhere praying, calling on God. And all of a sudden, the presence of the Lord came down in that hospital. I started prophesying. And I know it can only be God. Because I was crying, I wasn't in that mood. But the presence of the Lord filled that hospital room. And God, I know I started saying it in Yoruba. I will tell you what. I said, God said, Moti jela to wafi ajulo miho. That this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory, for my own glory, for the glory of his name. You know, God would have, could have healed our son when he was just having loss, appetite loss and so on in the school. But he waited till now to show forth his story. And I'm declaring to you today as you are watching me, what is the situation you are going through? Are you hopeless? Are you helpless have been there? There were times I sat on my chairs and I'll be crying, hitting my head in hopelessness. But God has showed us mercy. God has sent a helper to us. That God has remembered us for good and spared our son's life. He will come. He will show forth on your behalf today. It's not over yet. God will arise. If you, are in the, if you are in captivity, he will deliver you. He will set you free in the name of Jesus. You know the Bible says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive delivered? But those yet the Lord. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prayer of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. I will feed them that are present with their flesh. They shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know, shall see that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. God did it in our lives, and he will do it for you too. I started prophesying that God said he has come. He has shown forth on our behalf to heal us up. And all of a sudden, God just arranged a doctor there. The doctor said, why? We don't know what is wrong, but about 10 years ago, I, I, I treated somebody with a consultant there that presented symptoms, like the one our son was going through. And he said, let's just start this treatment empirically. And that was how God took over. Everything they started doing from that point started working. My son herself started cooperating with the doctors. He was on life support for nine days. He didn't even open his eyes. But God was with him. During those lifeless hours, those, those, you know, those hours in the dark, those darkest moments, God was on. And he woke up on the ninth day. He was huge, brethren. Our son was in the manual come. This is our son today. He has been off medication since April. They thought they said they were going to treat him for two years. God took over. He's not even using time. No, not like that's what they call parastamol in Nigeria. No time, you know, no parastamol is strong. It goes. I hope they are seeing you on the camera. Please come closer. Yeah, I think this is our testimony. See what God has done for us. I give God all the glory. He alone can do it, and He has done it for us, and He will do it for you today. As you are watching me today, what are you going through? If God could bring him another back to life, do you have a sick child? That child is rising up from that sick bed today. This boy came to you and 